And we're here with Hugh Atchison, legendary chef. It's nice to finally meet you. Well, it's good to be here. It's not every day that rock stars shout you out as their favorite chef. So yesterday we talked to Mike Mills from R.E.M. We love us some Mike Mills. That man is just awesome. He's totally cool. He's just down to earth. Does he have, like, special orders when he comes to you? No, no, no. He is the least persnickety of uh, any rock and roll stars that I've ever served. He who's the awesome. Mo- who's the most persnickety? Uh... You know, I mean, I remember doing things when I was very young for, like, Madonna and stuff like that in Montreal that were kind of, you know. Ooh, what does Madonna iffy. want? I mean, she just wanted a gazillion things. It was, you know, a, a tons of entourage and things like that. So it's a so different world. At that point, are you like, all right, I better do this or that bitch? No, no, no. You're like, <laughs> we can do this. Come on. <laughs> And then you fire the person that goes that bitch. So, yeah. <laughs> so your new book, which is beautiful, a new turn in the South. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, thank on this. you. Yeah, lots of work. A lot of work. A lot of pictures of your hands in it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why that was. Rin Allen, the photographer, I didn't notice her focusing on my hands so much, but I guess uh, they're worn and torn. They'll do. So. Well, well, what I like about it, and what I've sa- heard you say in a lot of interviews, that Southern food doesn't necessarily have to be fattening. Right. I mean, it 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 should be a celebration of what's around us and the agrarian community that we have here in the South. That we, you know, for the last fifty years, we went through this big convenience foods and everything break and I think that we're getting back to what food should be and it should be a celebration of all the farms we have locally which are plentiful and just amazing stuff around us so if we can do that then we're going to make food that's a lot healthier well you have certainly changed dining at least in Georgia with your three restaurants starting at five and ten yeah which it, it really changed Athens I think I think people went out of their way to go to Athens to go to that restaurant I know I have right right and then the National. The National. Are you a yeah. big fan of the band, the National? I am a big fan of the National, but we named it way before, uh, you know, we became fans of the band. It's funny because REM and the National are close friends as bands go, and Bertus Downs is, uh, is is very close friend. He wrote the forward of the book. He's like, you know, there was a band called the National, and then we started listening to them as well. Okay, so, so there's no, like... There's no connection. And there's no, no like, they're not going to no. sue you or anything. No, okay. no, no. <laughs> I do. My, my next restaurant is called Cindy Lopper's Playhouse, which is weird, <laughs> but I, I, it can work. And then Empire State South, which is great. Right. And that's got to be a lot of fun, keeping that going. Just down the street. It is a lot of fun. You know, it's a year old, so it's broken out of its uh, little uh, infancy, its terrible ones. Uh, and it's, you know, it's more of a mature restaurant now. And it just takes a little while to get to that that realm in the restaurant world, the first year of a restaurant it's kind of like dragging your head through gravel mm. um, but it gets better well it's gotten better for you Hugh it's now good. you are a judge on top chef you went from top chef masters which you kind of got lucky on that because you I got did. voted off I got voted off and then came back on and then did actually quite well for a long time and uh, went through and I was a uh, fifth in the end to get uh, booted off so made it well past the halfway point and had fun with that. I think I was the only person having fun with that show, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> and then I did an episode of Top Chef Just Desserts, uh, which was really interesting, a lot of sugar shock. Uh, and then uh, went to, got invited to be one of the three judges on the new uh, new season nine of Top Chef. So who makes that call? Does Andy Cohen call you and say? I don't know who really makes that call. I mean, the production company that really the Top Chef franchise is under the uh, realm of a group called the Magical Elves, which are an amazing production company, really interesting group, really, really super talented. And they built that franchise into what it is. And I'm not sure if it was um, their people or if it was uh, Bravo or uh, a mixture of the two. I'm led to believe it was probably a mixture of the two. That's a good gig to have. So you're going to be a judge you and Emeril are switching off? Me and Emeril and Gail Simmons all sort of rotate through. So I'm just about on every ep- other episode. I'll be on uh, this week's episode. That's very, very exciting. Now, I've heard Padma can be a little bit tough to deal with. Is that true? Um, you know, uh, it's, I, no. She's great. <laughs> Jeez. How can I juggle this? No, no, no. She's... Uh, she, she was quoted recently as saying, I have a very acerbic wit, and, um, and it took a while to like me. <laughs> I was like, really? Okay. Um, no, she's great. She's uh, stunningly 
beautiful and an amazing presence on TV. And th- she's really done an amazing thing. And then Tom Colicchio is, is just so badass and so he, cool. He is. Have you guys ha- ever had a conversation about craft? Like, what, oh, went, yeah. what went wrong? Why do you think it didn't happen for Tom Colicchio here? Mm, I think that's a bigger story. I don't know. I mean, I, we've talked about it. But, you know... I, th- I think it's different, difficult for a lot of out-of-town chefs to come into this city. They're, they're miss, they miss one really important thing is Atlanta likes a big hug. They want to, they want to feel included in what you've got going on at the restaurant. Um, so, you know, you have to do a lot of FaceTime. You have to go around and see people. You have to know people's names. And you have to, you know, thank them for coming to the restaurant on a regular basis. So, you know, so they're, you know, Atlanta's pretty much into community restaurants now. And they, you know, they speak to their own a lot. So you need to school Emerald, too, because he had the same problem here. You know, uh, they, they, they both, uh, yeah, they, they both didn't uh, do surprisingly well. I mean, they're, they're, they do really well in their markets, and we all do, you know. And, and that's, I think, the secret is sometimes we expand really quickly and we take chances. And maybe they took a chance that they just weren't ready to take. But, you know, on the other hand, uh, Atlantans probably don't dine out as much as New Yorkers do. You know, New Yorkers don't use their kitchen cabinets for kitchen stuff. It's like clothes and shoes. It's, right. it's weird, you know. That but don't you think that Atlanta is a pre- pretty progressive town? As in exactly what you were saying, like, we know as diners when you're just pumping out a corporate formula. Like, I think people want to go to Empire State but South. that's the thing is I don't think Kraft was pumping out a corporate formula at all. I think they are doing really, really great work. But, you know, there was this little bubble of a recession that recently went by mm-hmm. um, and that we're still mired in and it seems to get worse every day. So that's not helping anything in this But it hasn't, it hasn't interfered with any of your restaurants? No, but we're at a different price point. You know, I'm, I've always opened restaurants that are very wide spectrum that try to appeal to a lot of different people with a different amounts of cash in mm-hmm. their pocket. And I think that's really important to us. You know, uh, when you're talking about New York diners, people go out five, six nights a week. They it's do. It's crazy. They do. Um, and that's just how they live. Atlanta diners are a little, you know, probably not as common to go out that much. So, you know, you want to have a formula that's going to work it, 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 to the that that crowd. I think Atlanta is in a big growing up stage in the last five years, too, in restaurants. It's just it's grown into authenticity. It's really cool what's happening in the food scene here right now. We've got Abattoir and all of Annie Quatrano's other restaurants and um, just great stuff on Buford Highway. And and we're finally relishing in those things. Well, um, you're a big part of that, Hugh Atchison. Well, we you have it. no idea how, and I like to call you by both names just because yes, it sounds good. very official. So listen, Hugh Atchison, that the idea that when we watched you on Top Chef as a judge representing, or we watched you on Masters, right. it makes the city very proud, just the same way it was with Richard Blaze yes. and with Hector. Hey, and we've got awesome Top Chef history in this town, and it, uh, Eli and all those folks. Totally. I mean, just, just really did well, and geez, Blaze continues to do so well, and uh, so it's great to see all these people uh, doing it. I mean, and We don't he- want to forget Kevin Gillespie, too. No, Kevin's done great with Wood Fire and continues to do great. I think he's got a big cookbook coming out soon, too. And then Hector. Hector's the hardest working man in the business, man. That guy busts his hiney every week and just does amazing, amazing work. That sandwich shop is so good. It is it's amazing. So badass. And the burritos on Saturday. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's Super like the pan. Best burrito ever. Yeah, so. it's great. Well, that's a high endorsement coming from you, Hugh Atchison. We're going to watch you on Top Chef. Who's going to win? Well, I can't say that. We haven't done the finale, so we don't even know. <laughs> so we did the finales really close to when it airs in the end. And that's, you know, that everything, there are no secrets let out anymore. All so right, it's, it's a good thing. But okay. it's a good season. And um, before we go, um, you've been given a nickname, Huna Brow. Right. I think Bravo uh, or Andy Cohen may have really perpetuated that. But, uh, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I'm at peace with my eyebrow. Uh, America, are you listening? Uh, it seems to be a, 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 a such a schism issue in the United States. It's like, you know, politics and the Tea Party are occupied and then Hughes one eyebrow. Don't ever change it, though. No, I know. Like, I don't know. ever wax no. it. No, we're not waxing it. Don't ever do you anything. See my two little daughters and their burgeoning little monobrows. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, them, that's trouble. a different story. Yeah, yeah. The book is a turn in the, in, in the South, and it's great. And, oh. Somebody called you. No, no, no. I'm you getting get texts. Uh, okay. I think I'm moving my apartment in a while. Okay. Hugh Atchison. Hugh well, Atchison. Thanks. Nice to see you. Awesome to be here. <laughs>